before we do anything else, as we're talking about prayer this morning, uh, we had a, I had a ministry meeting with, with, with those that's leading our Sunday school and, and, and their youth ministry and children's ministry and the worship ministry this week. And we were talking and we're sharing and I was trying to paint vision for them and what I was looking for and what I was expecting of them as we start a brand new year. And as we were doing that as well, the, the conversation came to the place where, and I really feel this, and we've done this in the past, but I, I feel a great sense of urgency as a body of Christ to do it this year. And I believe, Debbie, you have an ink pen and paper ready, and Crystal, you got pen and paper ready. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Uh, as the adults in this room, it doesn't matter how long you've been coming here, uh, maybe new to you, you've not done this before with us, but I invite you uh, to do that is we are going to compile a list of our children uh, from our smallest to our teenagers, and uh, we want to assign a kid to every adult. And as an adult, a man of God, a woman of God, uh, it's going to be your responsibility to pray for them every day throughout this year, 2022. As well as, I would like for you to be able to touch that child in some way uh, at least once a month, meaning this. I don't care if it's a dollar box of candy when you walk in on a Sunday morning and you make sure if you know where they're sitting or you want to give it to them personally, uh, you, you, can, you can just say something encouraging to them and, uh, and you just speak into their life. And uh, if that's an adult that's in this room that would like to participate in that, I'm just going to simply ask uh, you to raise your hand. They're going to write your name down real quick, and then we're going to take a list of our kids, and we're going to assign a kid to every adult that wants to participate in that. And uh, so if you would make a commitment today to say, you know what, in my prayer time, I will make sure that I call this child's name. And you say, does that really make an impact? It really does, and uh, not to embarrass anyone or anything like that, but uh, Keaton was in our meeting, and uh, he said, I remember uh, when we did that, and he said, Larry Plemons did a really good job. He always prayed for me. And uh, so, so I publicly say thank you for impacting that young man's life. There may be in a way you didn't even know, uh, but as, a, as an adult... Uh, He's now saying, you know, that made an impact in my life. So, so it does work. And uh, so, so if you would say this morning, you know what, I, I'll, I'll commit to pray for a child this year that's in this church. And, uh, and, and listen, it, it, it is life-changing. So, uh, so I ask you right now just to lift your hand. And they're going to write your name down. Just keep them up real quick. Uh, and you all write real fast. And uh, as you're doing that... Uh, this is the best way I know to do it because of the simple fact we get busy, we get distracted at the end of service instead of going out and standing in line and writing. So we we'll take a few moments to do that, and uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we touch these children and young adults and teenagers. And uh, so I say thank you. It warms my heart that I see that many hands raised across the building this morning. And as you're standing there looking... Uh, unique with your hands raised. I'll go ahead and keep talking and move on to my next thing, all right? And then you all just give me a nod when you get them all done. Uh, as we start a brand new year, uh, we are uh, we're giving you the option uh, to, uh, to do things a little bit differently. I know there's a lot of uh, uncertainty going on in our world. Uh, we are in the process of rolling out a brand new website uh, that is going to be much better than anything that we've ever had. I'm actually doing a final meeting on Tuesday with that, and that should be up and running by the end of the month. And that way, because of a lot of censorship and things that is possible in the future, uh, we will be able to still stream our services, and uh, we'll be able to have one place everybody can go to. We'll still continue to be found present on uh, Facebook, uh, Rumble, YouTube, all of the major platforms will still there until they throw us off. And uh, I'm sorry. Need your hands raised still? Are you guys good? Yes. Everybody's good on this side? Everybody good on this side? All right, thank you. Uh, so we'll still be on all of those major platforms, and we encourage you to follow us there. Uh, we have a, have a, we're, we're gaining all of the time in our online, on, with our online audience, and uh, it's, it's amazing. 
uh, to see what God is doing through that, and we get uh, messages through that and things of that nature. So what's happening here is touching in many places uh, across the globe, and we're, we're so thankful for that. But there will be a new website rolling out where you also will be able on that website to give financially and support the ministry. Let me say thank you, thank you, thank you for another wonderful year. Uh, you have been so faithful, not just with your presence in the house of the Lord and the things of God in times of disasters and things of that nature, but also financially you have faithfully given. Uh, but starting today as well, I think he has the number he can put on the screen. Uh, if you would like to be a tech-savvy person, uh, I still write checks and all those things, but a lot of people like this, and it is effective. Uh, the bookkeepers don't like it because it's just more work for them. Uh, but you can simply type the word give uh, in, the, in the section when you type in uh, 765-329-329. 2442. If you put that number, if you go to your telephone and you type that number in and then just type the word give into the comment section there, it will give you the prompts to do. And uh, then you can have that a reoccurring gift where you don't ever have to touch your phone again and your offering will be there automatically every week. Uh, or you can do it every week uh, that way. Uh, so it will prompt you. Uh, I don't know. I tell my kids all the time you need to carry cash. Uh, but they carry cards and phones now. So, uh, but I proved my point to them and they didn't need cash. So I'm just saying, uh, but, uh, so enjoy the technology while it works, I guess. So we want to make it every, uh, uh, and we encourage you to just continue to support the ministry ever how you want to, but this is a really neat, easy way to do it. Uh, I have to say it's neat and easy because I did do it once to try it. And I was like, I understand why they do it. So, but, uh, so, but that is a way you can give this year, uh, and, uh, or you will be able, and we'll be rolling out our website a little bit more later in this month. So it's going to be a nice tool as well, okay? So that's pretty much all the announcements that I have other than don't forget 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We're going to come in for an hour of prayer. It's going to be very, uh, just, uh, just going to come in. It's not going to have a lot of structure to it. We're going to come in for a time of prayer, uh, and we'll do that Monday and uh, on uh, the 17th as well at 7 o'clock. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful time just to come together and pray. But the 21st, you do want to write on your calendar. It's going to be a Friday night service, time of worship, time of the word, a time of prayer. Uh, we're working on getting some folks with us here for that service. Uh, so that will be a wonderful time. You want to be here for that. I'm believing God's going to meet us here in a very special way as we finish up 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's going to be a wonderful time of the Lord. And uh, so you want to make plans to be here uh, if, if possible. Uh, I think I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what it is, so I guess I'll move on. Uh, but uh, those of you going to class, feel free to do so at this time. Uh, one thing I am forgetting, I will tell you real quick, and I'll mention at the end, is every day uh, through now, through the, tw the 21st, uh, Pastor Phil and others uh, is joining with us in this time of prayer and fasting. 6 a.m. if you're an early riser, you want to have coffee at 6 a.m. and have a time of prayer, uh, you can do that online with uh, Pastor Phil. You can go to Global Awakening on Facebook or you can find his personal page. It'll be there. He'll be leading you in prayer uh, and exhorting. But then if you are still up at 10 o'clock every night uh, for the next 20 days, uh, you can join me on our PTC Facebook page. I will be there at 10 o'clock, and I'm just going to give you a word, uh, uh, exhort you, and just going to lead you in a short prayer. And uh, so I encourage you to do that, okay? And if you do that, I would encourage you to share that with everybody in your social media world uh, that you don't know that you call friends because they might become friends, okay? Uh, so, uh, but uh, I believe that's all the announcements. So those of you going to class, free free to do that right now. And now that I did all of that. Yeah, I will need that. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to ask you to go to the Word with me this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, Joel chapter number 2, we're going to be in just a moment. The book of Joel chapter number 2, we will be there and we're going to just dive in this morning. And uh, I want to share with you, if the Lord would help me, I'm going to pace myself this morning. Uh, 
maybe a little teaching this morning, uh, but uh, I, I just feel like what I'm getting ready to deliver to you is of, of great importance, and uh, I pray that we will have ears to hear and hearts to receive this morning. I did not, uh, uh, but let me now at this moment welcome you that are visiting with us. Uh, it is a joy to have you this morning in the house of the Lord, and I pray that our time together is a time of encouragement for you as well. Uh, but as you have probably gathered uh, by, by this point, we as a ministry has decided to start this year in a time of prayer and fasting. Uh, so January the 1st through January 21st uh, is a time of consecration. Uh, it is a time of fellowship with the Lord. And our purpose for doing so, I want to make it very clear, uh, our purpose at the beginning of this year is for us to enter into this place of consecration so that we can hear clearly from the Lord as well as be positioned to be led by the Spirit of God in this year. We find that in this time, it is important that we use it wisely and prepare ourselves for the assignment that's been given to us for the year that we have just began. As I was thinking and reflecting uh, on where we're going and what our purpose really is and you've heard me over the last several months uh, talk uh, repeatedly about the urgency of the harvest and this is a harvest season and I believe it's the final harvest that's my personal opinion uh, so as with that been in mind I thought what is it that the Lord would really speak into my into my spirit and what is a verse that I could give to you for for a direction for this year and uh, and that verse, and I'm not going to preach on that this morning, but we're going to be in the book of Joel in just a minute, uh, but just laying a foundation here. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 22, verse 9, uh, the word of the Lord is this, Go ye therefore into the highways, and, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. You will find that there's two things in this verse. It's a very simple verse. The first thing, he simply says, go. And the second thing is bid. That means to give an invitation, to invite, to come to the marriage. Our whole focus this year is to equip and send out to go as well as to invite those to come to the marriage, meaning this, to come to the presence of God. It is nothing more than the Great Commission. Please hear me. There is people today that wants to hear what you have. We cannot allow the enemy to silence us because of uncertainty. But now we have to make sure that we stand and we call out to those that are hurting because they need Jesus. Amen. My family needs Jesus. Your family needs Jesus. Our community needs Jesus. Our nation needs Jesus. The nations of the world needs Jesus. So this morning, with that being said, I want to take you to the book of Joel, chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 12. Verse number 12, reading through verse number 18. If you're able, I know you stood a lot, but if you're able, if you're not, I totally understand. But our custom is to read in reverence of the word this morning. Last time I'll ask you to stand this morning until the end of our time. Word of the Lord. It says, Therefore also now saith the Lord... Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him? even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. 
and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. I thank you for the people of God in this room and those that's joining us by way of live stream today. Father, today I pray for the next few moments that you would anoint this vessel. Lord, give me strength, give me clarity of thought, give me the ability to speak that which you birthed in my heart today. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for the increase. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for reverencing the word of the Lord this morning. It is with great urgency that I present to you this morning the word of the Lord that I just read to you. For a few moments, I want to ask you and to a few questions, but also I'm going to talk to you. And if I was to title this this morning, it would simply be answering the call. We have now entered into a new year, and we are truly believing for the Lord uh, to do great and mighty things. But we must be honest with ourselves this morning as men and women of God. Our personal decisions and our personal behavior has a major impact on what and what will not happen in this year. It does not matter what others may say or do. What matters is what are you and I going to do with our lives concerning the things of God. As we read this morning, the book of Joe, we are shown a specific time in the history of the nation of Israel and the children of God. Israel in this season, when this was written, was in a place where there was a great tide of destruction that was sweeping through their land, and it was because of various sins. Now, in order for us to really understand uh, Joel chapter 2, you have to really visit Joel chapter 1. Now, some of you are familiar with this passage of Scripture, and, uh, but let me just give you just a short review of chapter number 1. The word of the Lord comes to the man of God. He begins to speak to him, and he says, I need you to deposit into the ears of the men and women uh, of this day that they are in the destructive manner that they find themselves in today because of their behavior. And he said, because of your sin and because of your rebellion, because of you going against that which I have spoken concerning you, he said, this is what you're finding yourself in, a place of great uncertainty and a place of destruction. And when you get to verse number four, he simply says, let me start in verse number three. He says, tell you your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. He was simply saying, don't ever let it ever be forgotten what's taking place right now in this moment. He's saying that that which the pommel worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust has left, the canker worm hath eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left has the calipiter eaten. He said, Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up on my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste, and have barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean, bare, and has cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Uh, he said, Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the Lord's ministers, they're mourning. The field is in waste. The land is mourning. The corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up, and the oil is absent. He simply then proceeds in verse number 13. He says this. He says, you must gird yourselves and lament, you, you priest. Uh, he said, you must uh, go to the altar. You must begin to cry out. Uh, and he said, not just occasionally or momentarily, but he says, all night in sackcloth. Uh, he said, you must, uh, he said, you ministers of God. He said, you got to bring back the meat offering and the drink offering. Uh, he said, because it's all been held from me. He said, nobody's even acknowledging that I'm God. He said, you have lost your way way in such a manner that he prompts him to write in verse 14, sanctify you a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. 
He proceeds to say this in verse 17. He says, it is so bad right now in your land that the seed is rotten under their clods uh, and the garners are laid desolate and the barns are broken down and the corn is withered. Think about the condition that they found themselves in. If I could say it this way uh, in modern day language, uh, their land was a mess, uh, their life was a mess, uh, their church was a mess, uh, everything that they touched was broken. Does it sound familiar? Our land is a mess. Our houses of worship are a mess. Our families are a mess. Everything we touch breaks because we're out of the will of God. I knew you wouldn't shout me down. It's I've got 50-something more weeks to get it right for you, all right? This is just the first Sunday of the year. Please hear me. When we read this, it paints a picture of doom and gloom, and it's like, oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? Everything's a mess. And if there was only chapter 1, I'd be saying, woe is me. But I'm thankful that there's a chapter 2. Because in chapter 2, we find that the Lord is issuing a call to repentance and he's calling for repentance because his heart is breaking because of the condition of his people this morning I can tell you that when God looks down from the portals of heaven that his heart breaks because of the place that he sees us Because there is so much more for us. Now please hear me. He says this. He says, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all of your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments. Can I tell you it was common practice You can find it all throughout Old Testament Scripture. You can see it if you read of Mordecai. You can see it if you can read of the prophets. uh, That if they found themselves in a place of anguish or a place of darkness, uh, it was customary for them to take off their attire that they normally wore and put on sackcloth and ashes, but they would rip their garment. It is not enough to have an outward rendering of the garment. Uh, There has to be something in the heart change. Listen. Well, I'm not calling us to a place of prayer and fasting just so that we can say, oh, we started the year in prayer and fasting. I'm not asking you to rend a garment this morning, uh, but I'm asking you to rend your heart, meaning to turn your heart uh, to the King of kings and Lord of lords uh, because he is desiring uh, to do something unique and special in this season of life. Uh, Notice with me, uh, we find uh, that uh, the prophet writes in verse number 15 of chapter Chapter 2, he said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. I don't have a trumpet this morning, so I'm using my voice. I'm blowing my voice to call you to a place of prayer. Notice with me, God is faithful And his word does not just bring words of warning, but it also produces words of hope. A proclamation, so to speak, of the return of the blessing and the favor of God is what comes when true repentance is present. I cannot overstate this morning the need for true repentance amongst the people of God and in the nation that we call home this morning. Not only has our nation lost its way, but the people of God have lost their way as well. Now, I'm not saying that from a judgmental place, but I'm saying that from a place of truth this morning. We are a people that have been overwhelmed with information, and we have strayed from the highest point of truth which we once stood. I may mention last evening on my little live post that for 250 years, we as a nation 
had times that was set aside that was called fast days. Those was not called just by spiritual leaders, pastors, and people of spiritual authority, but it was called by government leaders and presidents and men that held high office in our land. Dr. Delos Love, New England, he has documented over 400 times. There's 400 things on record of 400 specific days that was called by men of leadership for times of prayer and fasting, of getting along with the Lord for direction and guidance. We find from the year 1600 all the way up through the Civil War that even Abraham Lincoln himself called for a day of fasting in our nation so that we would know how to respond and move. But now we have come to a culture today that not only do we not have government officials or people of authority, but we don't even have spiritual leadership calling for times of consecration, and fasting and direction from the Lord. What I'm saying today this morning is that much of what we hear, while it is very pleasing to the flesh, it produces poison to the spirit of man. And there has to be a change. True repentance, please hear me this morning, is the only thing that releases the prophetic promises of God. You are hearing a lot of things that God is going to do this and God's going to do that and his word says this and his promises is that and I will tell you this that prophecy and promises that you find in the word of God are all conditional. Notice with me 2 Chronicles 7:14 if my people It's a small word but a very powerful word. Depending on how we decide to behave and how we decide to live our lives will determine whether we experience revival or not in our area and in our lives. I will tell you this, there is no shortcut to this thing. If you want your children and your children's children to walk in deliverance and to walk and experience the power of God and the anointing of God, it will cost you not something, it will cost you everything this morning. Please hear me. Men such as Charles Finney, John Wesley, many others, John Hyden, I could talk to you about Smith Wigglesworth. These men did not occasionally visit a time of prayer or a time of fasting, but they lived it continually. I ask you this morning, are you willing to pay that price am I willing to pay that price we today are not just been given a word of warning but please hear me we are being given a message of hope if we will turn to him with true repentance I want to share with you seven promises that are found in this passage of scripture in the book of Joel chapter number two and we read down through it a little bit together this morning But these promises are not for everybody, but they're for those that will rend their heart and not their garment. They are for those that will come into a place where they will align with the things of God and the Word of God. I will say to this young generation that's under the sound of my voice this morning, you can be anything you desire to be, but only if you line up with the Word of God. There is nothing that can stop you from fulfilling your prophetic and mandate purpose that God has for your life. But we find that I believe these seven things that we find throughout this chapter that was promised to Israel are still present for you and I today. And I want to look at them. You may ask, why is it that the Lord was calling them to a place of repentance? Why is it that God was telling them to fast and pray and call a solemn assembly? Why is he calling them to weep and to mourn uh, uh, and to rend their heart? It's because of the simple fact he wanted them to enter into a place of restoration. God is desiring for his people to be restored back into a place where they are walking in the fullness of his presence. There is something about Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, when the people of God 
had been in 10 days of prayer and consecration and the sound of a rushing mighty wind came from heaven and set upon them. What I want to say to you this morning is there is a wind that he's desiring to release upon his people, but there has to be a place of consecration. The first thing that you find if you read a little further than where we stopped this morning, you will find that the first promise that I can give to you today that is biblical and scriptural this morning is that there is a breaking of poverty and divine provision that can be released to the people of God in this season if we will give ourselves to a place of prayer and fasting and come back to a place of true repentance. Notice with me, Joel chapter 2, verse number 19 says, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you approach among the heathen. Please hear me. We are in a place where things are changing drastically. I'm not going to be doom and gloom this morning, but I'm going to be very honest with you that we are on a pace to experience in this nation as well as the nations of the world to experience inflation like we have never known. People that are older can understand the time of inflation in the 80s. Uh, that was nothing to what is where we're headed to very quickly right now. And hear me, that can make you anxious, that can make you uptight, uh, especially when you're a small business owner and you're out trying to make things happen and you got other people under your care. That's a, that describes a lot of men and women of God. Uh, and let me tell you, there is a stress that comes with that. There is an overwhelmingness of grief that comes with that uh, because I can tell you this, that men of God and women of God that are business owners, uh, that they don't stay in business for themselves. Uh, oftentimes, they've made their living, uh, and they have done what they needed to do, and they could retire, uh, but they stay doing what they're doing because they want to be a blessing uh, to somebody else and to their family and to their family. So there, they feel obligated, uh, and therefore, there's a lot of things that they operate under. Uh, and I, I know this is a little different this morning, but stay with me. Uh, and therefore, there puts all kinds of anxious uh, there's all kinds of uncertainty and the people of God walking around with their hands uh, uh, twisting like this. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? Uh, I want to speak to that for a moment and tell you uh, that in this season, uh, God is about to be the provider. Uh, he's about to bring the provision uh, because uh, he has a storehouse in heaven. Uh, you do not have to be anxious this morning. Uh, as a man of God, as a woman of God, uh, please hear me. Uh, there is a freedom uh, that comes uh, and the stronghold of poverty uh, can be broken off of your life. I do not apologize this morning for being blessed. But I'm going to tell you this morning. I'm blessed this morning because I've not been perfect, no sir, but because that I have over the last 20, nearly 25 years of my life, uh, I've tried to lay between the porch and the altar and seek direction from God, uh, and I've seen that blessing begin to filter down on my children, uh, and I decree and declare it's going to be on my grandchildren, uh, and listen, uh, poverty is not coming nigh my dwelling uh, because uh, the word of the Lord says, uh, I will make provision. Uh, you need to get everything off you this morning. You say, why are you talking this way? Uh, it's because I'm telling you God's about to bring freedom to the man of God uh, and the woman of God uh, in every capacity in the body of Christ. Uh, and we're about to turn a world upside down. Uh, we can't be distracted by the garbage. Uh, the poverty will be broken uh, if you truly repent. Man, I feel this this morning. Just indulge me this morning. Freedom. Secondly, this morning, Joel chapter 2, verse number 20, he says this, I will deliver them from the oppression of the enemy. There is a release that's coming to the people of God. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of uncertainty, notice with me, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face towards the east sea and his hinder part towards the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. 
What's this mean, pastor? The word of the Lord is clear. The prophet is saying, if you really truly repent, if you rend your heart, not your garment, but you really turn back to me, not only will I break poverty off of my people, but I also am going to remove far from you, not just a little bit, but he says, I am going to far remove from you the northern army. Hear me. If the people of God in America and other places around the globe will truly repent, 2022, there's some things that's always kept coming around your house, trying to torment you, trying to attack you, trying to make life difficult for you. But can I tell you, those demonic, dark things, God says, if you really turn your heart towards me, I'm going to far remove them. That means the urges, uh, the temptation, uh, it's not going to be something you battle with. Uh, but God says, I'm going to take it. Uh, I'm going to remove it. Uh, I'm going to put it in a far desolate place. Uh, and he said, the stink of it is going to begin to be in your nostrils. Meaning this, uh, I am utterly going to destroy that thing that's tormented you. Uh, can I tell you, uh, there's some people about to walk in freedom uh, this year uh, because uh, of the breaking uh, of the oppressor uh, in this land. I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning, but that's all right. I'm going to preach on. Uh, listen, uh, you better be again to really think about consecrating yourself uh, because can I tell you, uh, there's freedom for your family. Uh, there's a stranglehold of the enemy uh, that's about to be broken off of them uh, if you will come to a place of repentance. <laughs> Thirdly, this morning, I'm trying to hurry. I know some of you got to go eat lunch, you think, but we ain't eating. You forgot about that, didn't you? <laughs> Let the Methodists, the Baptists, and the Pentecostals and everybody else get there before you because you ain't going today. It's all right. Thirdly, the former and the latter rain will come together. Joel chapter 2, 23. He says, if you'll truly repent, he says, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he, notice he, hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter in the first month, meaning this, if you'll repent, Israel, if you'll repent, church, he said in the first month, me and this thing's about ready to fight this morning. If you'll repent in the first month, I'm going to do something that's not normal. What he's saying is, I am going to bring the spring rain and the autumn rain, and I'm going to bring them together and let them come all at once in the first month. And it's going to take that which has been desolate and dry and not bringing forth fruit, and it's going to water it in such a manner that there's going to begin to be a springing forth in an exponential manner and there's going to be an abundance begin to come out of the land. That's why there is a former and a latter coming together. He's saying don't get hung up on what you had experienced formerly. But he said you ain't never seen it in this manner before. That's why when you read then the story of the crossing of the Jordan that we talked about on New Year's Eve, that the word of the Lord to Joshua to give to the people was, stay back about 2,000 cubits because you ain't never passed this way before. What he was saying is this, you have never experienced the former and the latter at the same time. You have experienced an anointing here and an anointing there, but you've never experienced it together. Uh, can I tell you, it's almost like having a hot dog uh, and then having a hot dog with ketchup. Uh, see, see, it, 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 you like, like ketchup over here and you like hot dogs over here, but when you put it together, it's a whole different thing, all right? Uh, the same thing. Uh, that's the best analogy I could come up with 30 seconds. Uh, listen, uh, you got to come to a place where you realize uh, that when you put some 
things together, uh, it has a greater impact uh, and it sparks you. Uh, there's about to be a spark in the house of God. Uh, oh, I'm about to preach this morning. Uh, I just need to know if anybody's uh, willing to answer the call. Uh, I'm not asking you to sing a song. Uh, I'm not asking you to dance. Uh, I'm asking you to lay before the presence of God uh, and say, God, I rend my heart towards you. I'm hurrying. Number four, a season of prosperity. <coughs> a season of prosperity. Joel chapter 2, verse number 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Somebody tell your neighbor, wondrously. He says this, if you'll truly repent, if you'll truly seek my face, he says, not only am I going to restore to you, but I am going to move wondrously on your behalf. I am going to let you eat in plenty, and I'm going to let you be satisfied. Oh, you're missing a place to shout right there. How can I enter into a place of satisfaction? I can't enter into a place of satisfaction unless I find myself in one place and one place alone. And that is this, in his glory. So he says, I'm going to let you be in plenty. And I'm going to let you step into a place where you're satisfied. Meaning this, I'm going to let you step into a place of my glory. Anybody ready to pray yet? Anybody ready to fast yet? Can I tell you, this is, this is something that, that goes very deep. Notice, he desires for his people to walk in abundance. Uh, and I'm not just talking about materialistically. Uh, yes, there's blessings and there's provision. Listen, every one of us in this room, we're blessed. Uh, I can take you to the places of the world where you find how, just how blessed you are. Uh, Brother Templin just got back. He's been in Nicaragua for six weeks, uh, almost seven weeks. Uh, he, he can say now in another manner, we're blessed, aren't we, my friend? Uh, and, and, and listen, we uh, we, we, we understand that, but there's an abundance uh, that we can have in the Spirit as well. Uh, where when I walk, He walks with me. When I talk, He talks with me. Uh, when, I, when I need to lean over, I can lay my head on His shoulder like John did, the beloved. Uh, and I can be in His presence. Listen, there's an abundance uh, that we can have in Him. He doesn't want you just to make it, but He wants you to walk with overflow of His provision. Tell your neighbor, say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Number five, there is a restoring of that which has been stolen. Notice what he says, verse 25. And I will restore. Notice he says, I will restore. He says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pomegranate. worm. And he said, my great army which I sent among you. He said, listen, everything, no matter what device was used, he said, I am going to restore everything that has been stolen. Let me give you John 10.10 10 before I expound on this. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm going to go on record this morning. And I want to say this very clearly. There is a church in the United States of America that's getting ready to experience the abundance. And we're going to walk in the abundant blessing of the Lord. And there are some things that's been stolen from us as a nation that's getting ready to be restored back, not because of political parties 
And not because of men, but because of a church that truly is repenting right now. And I'm going to tell you something. There's some things that's going to be removed, and there's some things that's going to be done unexplainably. And that which men thought would take years, God is going to do in a moment of time. Because he says, when true repentance has come to my people, he said, there is an abundance, and I am restoring. I want to tell somebody, there's some things the enemy stole from you. Your joy, your peace, your rest, uh, God's about to restore it. Uh, your health, God's about to restore it. Uh, but on a national letter, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, there's some things in political powers uh, and political office that's going to be restored as well. Uh, there's some things at the local level uh, that's going to be restored. Uh, there's some cities that's about to come back to where they honor God. Uh, there's some mayors, there's some councilmen that's about to decree and declare some things of fasting and some times of consecration. Uh, America is not done yet, my friend, uh, because there's a church inside of her uh, that is falling on their face uh, and is beginning to weep and cry and pray uh, and I'm asking you to be one of them this morning Amen. Amen. as the church comes back into alignment the spirit of oppression is going to begin to break and there is a removing please hear me I stand boldly and declare this this morning that those that has been bound by addictions and darkness there is a breaking of generational curses that's coming by the end of this month there is people I believe that's watching me and in this room that I'm going to tell you something. If you will truly face the things of God and you will truly rend your heart, I'm telling you by the end of this month, you will walk in complete freedom. You will not be bound uh, by those dark things. God's going to break it off of you. God is removing a spirit of oppression in this hour. That's why I'm asking you to answer the call. I'm not asking you just to pray and fast for you, but I'm telling you there's people in this room, people that want watch us every week, day, uh, week, day after day, week after week, uh, that they are bound, uh, and they want to be free. Uh, but there's a freedom, uh, and I speak to that oppressing demonic spirit, and I command it to be broken off of you in this house this morning by the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I decree and declare that you will be mighty men of God uh, and mighty women of God. Uh, I decree and declare that you will walk in health, uh, that you will walk in strength, uh, that you will walk in freedom. Uh, no weapon formed against you will prosper, uh, but great is he that is in you than he that's in the world uh, and you will do exploits says the Lord uh, and you will walk in your purpose uh, you got to just trust me says the Lord somebody give him a shout of praise right now oh oh my which brings me to the sixth thing this morning there is a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost Joel chapter 2 verse number 28 I, I know it's 12 o'clock, but you'll be all right. D, give me 10 minutes this morning. We find this. It says, and it shall come to pass afterwards uh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, and your young men shall see visions. Uh, I firmly believe this morning as the people of God humbles themselves in prayer and fasting that upon this time of purification, there is going to be a reward of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not embarrassed to say so. I am not Pentecostal because of a denomination, but I am Pentecostal by experience. And some of you are about to become more Pentecostal than you've ever been. Because there's a freshness of the Holy Ghost that's coming in this season. Number seven, my final point this morning. There is a manifestation of signs and wonders. He says to Israel and he's saying to you and I today, if you will truly repent, I am going to not just remember you, but I'm going to show you. Joel chapter 2, 29 through 32. It says, And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem 
shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Do you get that? Or do I need to read it again? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. We wouldn't have much reason to get excited if it just stopped right there because it would be specifically to that group of people in that specific place. But he didn't stop there. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant. Is anybody in here part of the remnant? Anybody here connected to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? See, if you're in the remnant, it means that there is a deliverance and that there is a manifestation of signs and wonders for those that has given themselves to him. God has always intended, please hear me, to manifest signs and wonders through his church. That's why Mark chapter number 16, verse 17 and 18, as they come to the piano this morning, it's so important. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Anybody believe this morning? I mean, you really believe this morning. He says, in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. As we enter into and dwell in his presence, please hear me this morning. He will release an anointing that is fresh for this hour. He is not going back to the wilderness and bringing us manna from generations past. But there is fresh manna right now for the people of God. Miracles of healing and deliverance is going to be manifested in the presence of God's people. And they're going to be brought forth by the hands of the people of God that have given themselves to the purification process. I don't care if you're in this room and you're 15 or if you're 95. Age is not part of this equation. I honor you that have served 50 years as faithful soldiers in the army of the Lord. But I will also speak to those that are babes in Christ. You are not exempt from operating in the fullness of the Holy Ghost in this season. And it doesn't matter how dark our past is or how many years we think we've wasted. What matters is that we're present now. And in the now, God is doing something new. So don't think it's strange if the nine-year-old lays hands and cancer falls off. Don't think it's strange if the 30-year-old that's been bound for the last 15 years of their life on addictions of all kinds of things begins to be the one that God uses and they lace their hands and they've only been a babe in Christ for six months. You see, God's not <coughs> necessarily focused on the years of service. But he's focused on who's answering the call. Here's the deal. <coughs> All I can do all I can do is present to you what he presents to me. All I can do is simply make the call. I'm calling somebody this morning, right now, in this room. You're probably on vibrate or silence, but here's the deal. <coughs> this call is of no benefit to you unless you make a choice to open it, to answer it. Right? This individual that I'm calling, I, I could tell them that I have $1,000 to give them right now. That they don't know that unless they answer it. He's like, man, I should have answered that right now. See, I was playing a little bit because I was hoping somebody didn't have their phone on silent. I was going to get somebody. <coughs> a 
And here's the deal. The call goes forth. But somebody's got to respond. <coughs> the question is, will you? Will I? Prayer and fasting takes us into a time of travail, which takes us into repentance. And when God's people experience repentance, their repentance, hear me, always moves heaven. So please hear me. What happens when heaven is moved? I'll answer. Do you have my thousand? Okay. See, I'm not missing the call, my friend. I really needed you, and you didn't answer. This morning, what does it mean when heaven moves? When heaven is moved by repentance, this is the three things that always is, is always the result of it. From my reading, from my study, and from examining great men of God such as T.L. Lowry and others that's given themselves to prayer, this is what I've come to understand, that when heaven is moved by repentance, it always produces these three things. It always produces deliverance, restoration, and peace. I want to say to you this morning, we are on the brink of increase in the midst of a lot of things decreasing around us. But we have to answer the call. Deliverance, restoration, and peace. Our world needs delivered. Our houses of worship needs restored. And our people need peace. I have talked with so many people, and I'm closing. I've talked with so many people recent weeks with such anxiety and such difficulty I am so outraged in my spirit of what I'm seeing the enemy do to good men and women of God men and women are walking around saying I can't breathe we was on the phone last evening with someone. And there was a young man, child, having some difficulty, but was nearly having a full-blown panic attack because of the oppressing spirit of the enemy telling this young child before it's even had a chance to really live that it can't breathe, that it's dying and all of these things, the mind tormented it. And I become so enraged in my spirit. Shortly after I come to the house of the Lord and spent some time in my office and just begin to talk to the Lord and say, God, this isn't good. And I refuse I refuse to settle for that. Folks, you have a God that loves you. Oh, how he loves you. And yeah, you can look around and say, man, our nation's upside down and the nations of the world is chaotic and rumors of war and all of this stuff, pestilence and disease everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But in the midst of it, God is saying, turn to me. I'm wooing you. I'm calling you. Because you're the ones that can turn it around. He's calling to his church. And I'm calling to you this morning. Will you? Will you just lay it all down? say God if you can use anything you can use me in the midst of all of my imperfection in the midst of all of my inadequacy and in the midst of my failures in the midst of my shortcomings God I just lay myself on the altar 
It's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And God, I'm just giving myself. I don't have nothing else to give. I just have me. But Lord, I'm giving me. And if you can take me, purify me, cleanse me, mold me and make me, <coughs> put me on the potter's wheel, take this broken clay vessel, mold it into what you want it to be. If we'll do that, the word of the Lord said, I'll turn from the evil that you're seeing. He said, I'll hear from heaven, and I'll forgive your sin, and I'll heal your land. What's he saying? He's not just saying, I'll heal the United States of America. No, that's part of it. I believe that there's healing coming in some way, shape, or form in many areas. But he's saying, I'll heal your land. He's saying, I'll heal you. I'll heal your family. I'm going to touch your children. I'm going to touch your children's children. I'm going to touch your city. I'm going to touch your state. I'm going to touch your community. But is there anybody this morning that will answer the call? On this second day of January, is there anybody that says, I'll I'll walk away from it all and just lay before Jesus? I don't know what that looks like for you. I'm not one to give you a list of mandates and tell you what to do and how to do. That's not, that's not my job. My job is simply to tell you that God's calling you. You may see yourself as inadequate, insufficient, not important. But I stand here and see you much differently. But more importantly, God sees you much differently. He sees you as a king's kid. When the God of heaven looks down, he doesn't just see you. He sees the blood that's overshadowing you. He sees that you've been adopted in and you're part of the royal family. And he says, I have a place for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. Even before you was in the womb of your mother, I knew what I had for you. But in this season, will you answer? Hey everyone, it's Pastor Jade here. I want to thank you for watching today. I pray that this message spoke directly to you and challenged and transformed your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I want to invite you to connect with us on social media and stay up to date with what's happening here at PTC. And I pray that you have a great week and a great year in the Lord. We love you.